my name is Sam Kamau. I'm a lecturer at the Graduate School of Media and Communications, Aga Khan University. My area of specialization is political communication, communication research, and new media technologies. The Kenyan media tried to give equal coverage to both sides of the divide. The only thing that happened is that they tended to focus on the two leading or prominent candidates at the expense of the other six candidates who were not given significant coverage. And I think what the media tried to do here was to make sure that each candidate was given space. For example, you'd notice with the TV stations, well today the lead story or the first story covered a specific uh, political coalition. The following day, the first story would cover the uh, other uh, political coalition. That means, this means that they tried in their effort. Of course, when you look at the Kenyan uh, media space today, partly because of our bias and partly for historical and ownership reasons, certain media organizations are perceived by viewers and other stakeholders as being aligned or leaning in specific way, partly because maybe their owners have publicly associated with certain politicians or political sides, or maybe the nature of their coverage indicates that they could be favoring a political side. The other thing, of course, is that we know who are the owners of some of the leading media organizations, and there's a sense in which the ownership is seen, or at least manifest, in the way some of the stories are covered. But looking at it, we would say that the media try to act professionally, especially the guidelines that were developed and signed by the media stakeholders, which were supposed to guide in how the media covered the different candidates. We would say, by and large, the media tried to uphold professionalism. Well, the 2017 elections presented a few unique challenges for the media. One of them I've already mentioned is the emergence and role of fake news in the whole electoral cycle. And what we saw is that whenever the media reported on a particular issue, the online or digital platforms, we would see uh, either counter stories or other versions of the same things that the media uh, had covered. The other thing is that we saw a lot of criticism directed at the mainstream media because of certain stories that either never found coverage or uh, were seen to have been killed but on the other hand is that uh, the fake news made the media compete with other information providers and this of course uh, muddied the waters and created a unique challenge how the media responded of course was by creating the fact checking desk and creating special segments where they would expose and highlight fake news that were in circulation the other unique challenge is that uh, as a result of uh, the ruling of the uh, High Court and the Court of Appeal about the coverage uh, of elections and election results, the media was not very sure how they were supposed to report on the results. And what happened is that uh, despite the fact that they sent journalists to the ground and in the constituencies to cover elections, they were not very sure about releasing the results that they were able to collect and tally because of a threat that came from the CS uh, in charge of the IC team ministry saying that they and, and of course coming from the communication authority saying that it is only IBC which is mandated by law in that sense of course the media exercise some level of uh, restraint relying only on the IBC portal to declare results I think that was one of the unique uh, challenges the other thing of course was having to wait until the end to make any declaration despite the fact again they had resources and they had access to information but again had to consistently rely and focus on IBC uh, to provide the information again we saw the emergence of self-censorship in that whole process the other unique challenge was uh, the well-intentioned move but poorly executed idea by the media to put together the presidential debate while the idea is good for voter education it is in the execution and consultation with the presidential candidates and the campaigns that ended up uh, having the candidates either abstain or boycott those debates. It was a good idea, but poorly executed. As a result, it failed to achieve its objective. This was again another challenge of the 2017 elections. Well, I think looking back of course the media organizations will have to introspect uh, audit themselves and see where they could have gone wrong for example uh, immediately after the final results were declared we saw there were celebrations and the media covered celebrations from specific uh, areas but at the same time we knew that uh, there were protests of violence that broke out in specific areas and the media again was accused of not highlighting 
uh, those specific incidences of violence, it was seen as uh, not balanced. And I think going forward, they would want to make sure that all these issues are looked at. The other thing is that uh, they could try to focus less on the personalities and try to look at the competing ideas because focusing on the personalities means that the policy issues are not properly interrogated. The other thing is that the media focused more on the events and the sensational happenings. That means we were not able to interrogate the manifestos and the visions of the different political parties and presidential candidates. It means then that the electorate was not able to make a decision based on a clear evaluation of policy proposals and specific action plans, but they just looked at the campaign, aesthetics, and the drama and the events surrounding these particular issues. If they are to organize another presidential debate, it would mean that they would have to consult and work closely with the political parties and the different campaigns and the candidates to make sure that these debates would actually be useful and uh, successful so that the uh, citizen or the electorate is able to make informed choices. The other thing, of course, is that continue with the... Um, you know, fact checking and make sure that they're able to debunk myths and fake news that uh, seem to be on the increase. The other thing is to make sure that uh, they have their own, since the law allows them uh, to collect information and also to release the information, they should have provided an alternative voice other than just waiting for IEBC and yet the court had made it clear that uh, the results at the constituency level would be final, the media would have waited until once the returning officers at the constituency level declared the results, the media can actually take that and go ahead and declare because the law would allow.